This is Belinder, and I'm going to walk through making a fun 80s light animation where we're kind of driving through the Tron-looking mountainous road. Let's give it a shot. All right, general, and we don't need any of this, actually, so I'm going to do select. Oh, no, we'll need the camera. So let's do object and delete, and then click on that guy, and we won't need the light. Great. And then let's do object, let's do add mesh plane. And once we do so, we want this to be about an eight and an eight. That's looking good. So let me go ahead and go into edit mode. And once I'm in edit mode, I'm going to do edge subdivide surface area. And what do I need to subdivide it by? About 30 cuts should be good. Okay. And so at this point, I can go ahead and click off of those 30. And what I want to make sure to do is way up here, proportional editing, but I want it random and connected. Okay. So now I have again that random connected. And let's go ahead and pick out a few vertices. I'm going to just click on four or five on each side. So maybe this guy. And now I'm going to hold shift and that one. That one. And same thing over here. Something like this. Okay. And with that done, what I want to do is go ahead and click on move. And I'm going to pull up. Okay. And let's take a look. Maybe a 3.5 here. But this is what we really want to pay attention to. Let's try a three. Whoop, that's probably too much. Maybe a two five for proportional editing. If we're doing this right, it's going to be obvious. Yeah, that's looking really, really great. So three, five, two, six. Awesome. Now let's just change the height of some of these. So I'm going to go here and maybe here, these two and I don't know, pull them up 0.5. And then I'm going to go here, um, this guy, and maybe pull them down just to give it a little bit of a unique look. So all the mountains aren't exactly the same height. And there we are. So that is looking really good. So far, so good. All right, let's go ahead and switch into object mode. And in object mode, what we're going to want to do here is let me zoom out. That's all great. So let me go ahead and I'm going to do object. I'm going to apply this scale, but I also need to move this guy over. Okay. So I'm going to put it so it's x location is going to be negative 8 for x. Okay. And with that done, x is negative 8. So now I'm going to do object apply because what we're about to do is we're about to mirror it. Uh, object set origin origin to 3D cursor and my 3D cursor was right there in the middle. That's great. So now let's go ahead into our modifiers. We need to add that modifier. And like I already said, it will be the mirror. Boom. And there should be no seam, none whatsoever. And that is looking great. Yes. So let's now go ahead and fix up our camera here. Voop. That is not where we want it. We want it at the start of our road. So to get it over here, this starts actually over there. So what we're going to do, yeah, let me go ahead and click on my camera here, pull it back, pull it over. We're going to get it roughly in place, push it down. And then where are we at here? Well, it looks like X is going to be negative 16, man. 
Yep, x should be negative 16, and then y will be 0, and then z will be probably 1, and then z is going to be 90. Nope, 1, 80, 270 it is, and ah. Let's take a look at that. And that looks perfect. That's exactly how we want it to be. All right, so let's set the frames then. First, make sure I had an issue with this. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit and Preferences. And then in Preferences, you want to double check the default interlope, you, interlope, interlopation. You want to make sure it's linear. All right, so let's make sure our animation one here, right? Not editing, none of that. Make sure this here is linear. All right, with that set to linear, let's go ahead and set up our animation. Uh, I don't want 250 here. I just want 120. That will be sufficient for our needs. All right, and let me check. Yep, that is still looking good. So what I am going to do then is I'm going to make sure this is on one. And with this on one, I'm going to lock. I'm going to keyframe my X location by clicking this. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end here. Okay. And then I'm going to pull one more. And now what I want to do, I'm going to click off of my camera. I want my camera to be nail be all the way down to here. Okay, so that will be positive 16, right? And if I click on it, I'm right at the edge. So at 121, positive 16, let's keyframe that. Let's go back to the beginning and hit play. This is looking awesome. Perfect. All right, so you can already see what is developing for us. Now, what can we do about the rest of our road here well that's actually somewhat simple i'm going to go now to select it i'm then going to do another mo another modifier my mirror one is still here but i'm going to add an array right. and let me just shrink down my mirror one here's my array how many times well that depends how long you want your road i'm going to do 10. And let's go ahead and test this. And it does. It's seamlessly looping for us, which is perfect. And now we're ready for more of the design aspects of this. So I'm still highlighted my road. I'm going to now go ahead and add the wireframe modifier. Wow, that looks kind of crazy. Oop. Okay, so what we want with this, though, is we do not want 0 0.2. I'm going to want something much more smaller, like 0 0.003, maybe, up to then 0 0.002. And then we're going to want to click off on Replace Original. Okay, so actually 0 0.002. 003 is what I want there. All right. And then what we need now is let's go to materials. And I'm going to make a new material. This one's going to be really dark. Right about there. And then the metallic color of it, we're going to want that to be at a one. Okay. And now I want to make one other material new and this is not going to be a normal one let's have this be an emission material and then oop, we wanted a maybe something of this nature strength i 55 and that is looking great and let's go ahead and head over to the modifier again and we want to set our material offset once, twice, and check it out. 
Ta-da! That is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and set up. Let's see here. Where's our world at? World. All right. I don't want this as my background. If we make it really dark, you can start to see what it will really be looking like. I already downloaded a picture from a website of a sky. So, and the one I got is open source, public domain. I'll attach it. I'll include it in the description, what I'm about to use, or you can find your own. You do want a rather large image. So be mindful of that. I'm going to click color. Oh, um, red there, color, environmental texture, environmental texture. And now I get to pick my image. And I got mine from HDRI Haven, which was recommended to me. Um, and then where is it? I put in downloads. So downloads and I believe it is this one. Open. Awesome. That's looking really good. Obviously the strength is way too high. So I'm going to do maybe 0.2 on our strength, but really where we're going to dive into it is in shading. First thing I'm going to want to do is, well, I need to see it. So let's go to viewport shading and then make sure you're not an object. You need to be in world. Okay. So I'm in world. Now, once I'm in world, this will automatically pop up. And now I can go ahead and do add search map. And I just went mapping. I'm going to put that here and I'm actually going to grab all of these and kind of move them over. All right. And then I need to connect this here. Oops. Click drag. There we are. I need to put that there. And now we can start moving around and seeing how to, uh, and seeing what looks good for a perspective with the current image. So I'm going to need to add, add, and then what do I want to search for now is a texture coordinate. Grab one of these, drop it here. We need generate vector. And there we are. So now we can start messing with properly how we're going to situate our road with our sky. Keep in mind, you do want to see mostly sky, if not all sky. I could see a little bit of ground here, but I'm actually not even going to do that. I'm going to go with like negative eight. Okay. So I'm liking the look of this. And now I want to change the hue saturation, which is right here. And there we are, color and yep. So how do I want to change it? Well, I want it to be more purple. So maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And if you turn these up some, depending on what yours is like, I could even, you know, that's way too high, obviously. Let's see, 0.8, that's getting away from purple, 0.7. And you're just going to kind of fool around with this some. And that's starting to get more purple. That's looking great. Uh, a few other things to be aware of. All right, let's go ahead and put bloom on. That gives it a nice shine. Some ambient oscillation here is also great. This is looking really nice. A few more things I want to do. Let's make the ground a bit bumpy. Okay. So let's go from object mode into edit mode. I'm going to zoom out here. And what I'm going to do is just grab maybe this. Something like that points randomly. I'm going to click this. 
I'm going to make sure random and connected. I'm just going to pull up. All right, and then let's do a point one two five. Mm, nah, let's do point one five so it's visible. And then this you can control the proportion. All right, that's a bit crazy. Let's. I'm going to set mine to about three. Let's give that a try. And this is looking really nice. Let's go ahead and go back to object mode so we can see the real thing. I'm going to restart it and hit play. So once it's rendered, you can tell how interesting, how fun, how nice it will actually be. And you can leave this on or off. I really do like that on. All right, let's go ahead and make our ground a bit more interesting. But to do that, I'm headed back to shading. And in this, I'm going to go from world into object. And make sure you're in slot one, not slot two, slot one, right? Because this is the one we're going to edit. And we're going to add two things. We're going to add a bump. I'm going to drop this here. And then we need this attached at the normal. This is going to be a 0.25. And let's make roughness 0.25-ish. Give that a shot. And then we also want to add a noise texture. Grab one of these, drop it here. And I'm thinking for this, I'm going to say 12 and maybe a 15 here. And then we want color attached to height, just like this. All right. And now if we head back to layout, you can tell we have a nice middle appearance now. All right, on our surface. Okay, our one last thing is to add the sun. So add mesh UV sphere, there it is. Let's go ahead and check out this. So I'm gonna put mine uh, probably 100 and then we can't see it anymore so 35, 35, 35 for the scale. Whoops, not 100Z, 100X. There we are. Let's see if we can see it at 150. No, so that might be our sweet spot right there. 110 is what I'm setting mine to. I'm going to add a modifier. That modifier is going to be a subdivision surface modifier just to smooth it out a bit. That looks nice. Let's add a material. And not a normal one, well, a normal one, but a mission material. And let's go way orange here. Uh, 1.5 should be sufficient for the strength. And now I want to make sure I'm going to click off. I want to click on my sphere. I'm then going to select my camera as well. And now I'm going to go to object, parent, parent to object. And now if I hit play, the camera is the parent of the sun. So it looks like the sun is forever away. Pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and render mine. Um, and yeah, if this, uh, boom, it's a pretty impressive image. If this was helpful, if you're still watching this, make sure to hit like, make sure to hit subscribe. It gives me warm fuzzies and all of that. Hope this was helpful.